Good afternoon, everyone. More data, more resilient. This is what we name our presentation for today. And this is, it's fully in line with the last global platform in Geneva in May. There's a big focus about link the community to the information, early warning, and early action. The Lebanese Red Cross established in 1945, 12,000 volunteers. Our goal is to promote peace, serve the society, and elevate human suffering with neutrality and without any racial, sexual, social, re religious, or any political discrimination. We'll give you a quick introduction about Lebanon. Anyone visit Lebanon before? One? I'm not surprised because, you know, you hear a lot about bad story about Lebanon. It's not safe. So I think I will change your mind. So Lebanon, it's in the Middle East. It's only 10,000 kilometers. We only have 4,000 Lebanese. It's not the same like our colleague from Philippine uh, Red Cross. They have 100 uh, million population. We have only 4 million population with 1.5 million Syrian refugees and 500,000 Palestinian refugees. But look what we have. So we have place to go and ski and enjoy your time. We have excellent night path. I don't think it's the same like San Diego, but still good nightlife. And we have beach and sightseeing, which is almost more than 200,000 years ago. So there's a lot to see. Keep this in your mind. <laughs> so this is a Lebanese disaster timeline. By going through this one, this is showing again, and we'll speak about resilience, and how the Lebanese are resilient. We have this timeline, and we are still enjoying life. So this is the resilience. How to adapt and cope with. 1948, we have the Palestinian exodus and its result to establish of Palestinian camps in Lebanon. And with 500,000 Palestinian refugees, they are still present until now. 1956. We have the Chaim earthquake and its result to 17,000 house destroyed. 1975 to 1990, we have the Lebanese civil war. It's a, with number of casualties, 120,000. 2006 war, we have the 33 days war. It's nearly around 1,200 dead and almost 1 million displaced. 2011, Syrian crisis, 1.5 million refugees fell to Lebanon. So I will show you a small video. This is an old video, but we, show, we, we found out it's really good to see it because this, it will give you good understanding about us. And improve livelihoods of the most vulnerable populations in Lebanon. Our vision, a healthy and compassionate community that values human life and dignity and encourages solidarity in action through a culture of volunteering. Our values, a humane, neutral and impartial national society that is accepted by all parties and that attracts and retains qualified and committed volunteers and staff. 46 ambulance stations, 12 blood banks, 40 medico-social centers, 32 youth centers, 7 disaster management units, 7,000 volunteers, 230,310 ambulance missions in 2013, 8,565 civilians trained in first aid, 25,723 units of blood given in 2013, 346,814 beneficiaries of the medical social centers, 99,279 beneficiaries of the youth centers activities, 24,090 Syrian refugees aided,
So based on what you saw and what we present, we face a lot of challenging before we have the GIS. So we're use of free analysis tool and hard copies. So data was often collected manually using hard copies and managed with free tools such as ODK, making for limited analysis. So this, it was making our operation very difficult. Lack of structures approach, no unity in data and data collection between different departments. Most data was not digitalized. So that's making, if we need to take decision, if we need to go back to the data, it was very difficult. And we had no data roadmap. LRC had no, road, no roadmap for digitalized data, causing duplication on, uh, of effort and delay on decision making. From rescue to resilient. Before 2017, our main focus on using GIS, it was for the, our rescue and to rescue people and to find their locations. In 2017, Lebanese Red Cross realized that ASRI had many more opportunity than only search and rescue mapping and starting implementing other tools such survey one, two, three, and others. So this is how we, how we start our, our, our approach. We start with desk study, connecting stakeholders, or sorry, consulting with stakeholders. And this, I will come back to this one because this, it was one from the very difficult uh, process we had. Cre creation of clear roadmap, developed of the tool, data collection, and again, we had some challenging here, analysis of the data. So again, to come up to, to this tool, when we start to have stakeholders mapping and stakeholder analysis to make sure about the buy-in. If we need to speak about the resilient, resilient, it's everyone business. It's about collaboration. And again, to maintain the sustainability of the data collection, it is not about creating the tool. It's about how you can make this tool will survive and will have long life and everyone can use it. So we call for a meeting since the Lebanese Red Cross part on the DRM unit at the Prime Minister office on the national level. So we had collaboration with them and we called all the stakeholder, relevant ministries, re relevant governorates, UNDP and ASRI as well, we were sitting at the same table. And we went through all the scenarios and we took into consideration our best practice and our failures and what we need from 2006 war. And this survey, it's not only about location and it's not only about simple information. It's really more deep information to help you to take decisions. And I will give one example about one of these surveys, which is about the bakery capacity. Like if we go to, to collect this data, one of the questions we ask, how many packages they are able to provide per day in the normal cases? and the maximum they are able to provide per day and the stock they have from flowers. So that's mean if this community is stuck, we are able to manage through the data that we have and we can calculate number of days or weeks that they can survive if this community is stuck. And this, it will not stop here. Now we are working with ASRI through the hub system. It's to make the link to the community and I will speak later about it. This is one of the dashboard provided by ASRI to help us to see the forecast. As you know, we are the main provider for the emergency medical service in the country. And we are mandated by the Ministry of Health since 1993. So what that means, our government, they don't have ambulance service. So we are running this service as the Lebanese Red Cross. So we, do, we have, so one of our main vision and objective is to reduce the response time. And to reduce the response time, we had already our dispatch system and we link our dispatch system to the GIS. One, to reduce the time, efficiency on, on the response, and plus to, to see the quality of our stations we do have something we call it patient care report. And all this information, it's go up to this uh, live dashboard. 
And as you can see, we can still see the cancellation of the mission. We can see the average time, mission per station, per ambulance, and it's not only that. We can see per hours, like we can see, for example, one, one of the things that we have, that, that we found, the big emergency, it's happening during the afternoon time. Since we do not have enough capacity, so this, it will help us to relocate our teams. So we have more, no, more numbers of the dispatchers during that time. And at the same time, this, it will help us to reallocate our ambulances to have forward ambulance time to reduce the response time. Very quickly on this one, again, you know, Lebanon, it's hot zone. We have sometimes boom, mass casualty accident, and still not only for that, even for the daily emergency. So before we face a lot of problem and challenging by finding blood types to the right patient. So now, as you see with these dots, we have the number of the donors and potential donors per type. This is linked not only to the headquarter of the blood bank, it's even for our branches, 13 branches all over Lebanon. So that means that if they have lack of blood storage, this it will help them to choose the region and to go for blood drive. I will speak more about the life that dashboard for the disaster risk reduction activity from my perspective as a DRR manager. Before this solution, my life, it was very difficult. I'm dealing with a lot of donors. And at the same time, we are working with the government to achieve the Sendai framework. You know, about 2015, 2030. So this one, we use a GIS survey 123, and we link it to the GIS to have the activity reports. So we can know exactly the number of volunteers involved, activity done, and the beneficiary, any equipment we distribute. And we are working with the Ministry of Education through the school safety, so we can exactly know through this dashboard number of activity conducted, per male, female, and per nationalities. It's not only that. Since we are working on community resilience, so community resilience, it's about to be risk informed. And to be risk informed, if you go to any community and you find out they, have, they are facing like hazard, like earthquake, tsunami, flood, armed conflict, they, they will not be resilient unless you make sure that you cover and you give awareness to all of these topics. So through, through, through this system, we create career paths for the community members. And this system will tell us if this member of the community receive all these awareness sessions and training. And here I can say this community is resilient. So it's not, about, it's not about to speak community to be more resilient. It's how we are able to achieve more and safe disaster resilience community. Again, same approach like our colleague from Philippine Red Cross, we have the tool, it's Hazard Vulnerability Capacity Assessment. So now, as you see in this tool, so we have the multi-hazard assessment, plus on the survey one, two, three that I just showed to you, it's, it's, we have all the capacity. So our aim now through the hub system to give link to each of the local municipality and the local institutions and the key players to use this information, and here we can say they are risk informed, it's early warning and early action. Because early warning without early action, it means they are not resilient. And to take this action, you need to have data, you need to have analysis for this data to help you to take the right decisions. So how we are able to do that? When we speak about collaboration, I mean, everyone we see collaboration, it's easy. But it's not easy, as we just said. How we are able to achieve that? Because of our present in the different levels. In the community, municipality, 
region, regional, we mean the governorates, and on the national level, we mean at the DRM, at the prime minister office. Top-bottom and bottom-up approach feeding to each other. So we go to the community, we listen to them, and we do the hazard vulnerability capacity assessment. The hazard will stay there, but what we can do, we can work more on the vulnerabilities. Since country like Lebanon, mainly most on the Middle East, we lack on data, and data is mean power. And who can give you this data? Is a community. But they will not give you this data if they will see there is no benefit from them. And if you speak about GIS and if you speak about maps, it's very complicated. For them, we'll see what is informing, how we can use this information. And this is important for the humanitarian to sit together with the scientific, like what we are doing now, to translate this information to a way that the community can read it and local authority can understand it to take decisions. And this idea it came to my mind. Last year, I was vis visiting one of the municipality and they had really very nice map showing all the hazards. So I asked him, can you please explain it? So simply he said, no, I don't know how to explain it. So what's happened, he had consultant, they came, they gave them the map, nice meeting you, this is a check, au revoir, merci. So what's that mean? So this is, this is the gap. And from here, this is what came to our mind, so we need to have, to, to change the cultures, and to create the culture of risk, and culture of understanding. You are not able to do that alone, as the Lebanese Red Cross. This is about collaboration, putting everyone together, everyone at the same table. So to come back to this picture, so we sit with the municipality, which is on the community level, sorry. The community speak about what they want and what, the, what, what their capacity as well, and we create with them something we call it community action plan. Based on that, we go and sit with the municipality. We say, this is the hazard, this is the capacity, and now with the GIS, we are able to create nice map for them. Simple, easy to understand. And we ask them to take the right decisions through collaboration in different in local institutions at the same time. And if we found out the local authority have no capacity through other our chair at the governorate level on the region, then we scale it up. This picture, this is one of the simulation in one of the governorate, we were using the GIS to take these decisions. And who's normally in this operation room? We have the Lebanese army, the police, the relevant ministry, civil defense, Lebanese Red Cross. So again, we'll not be able to have all this data if we didn't start from community level. And again, both on, based on the global disaster risk reduction, it's to link the community. Their big focus was on link the community to the local authorities and the local authority to the community to do the change. And this is what we are doing. And again, if you found any gaps through our chair at the prime minister office in the DRM, we'll make sure that the community voice heard on the national level. It's not only that. It's even if there's anything on the national level need to be translated to the community level, this is where our power as a Lebanese Red Cross, because we are from and within the communities. So this is a cycle feeding to each other. So through all what we explained and through the surveys that we have and the GIS system, we have better achievement, better understanding to the problem, better decision making. And we are able to achieve more than 1 million beneficiaries in Lebanon through our volunteers. It's have better efficiency for the ambulance service, for the disaster risk reduction activity, for blood banks, medical social use, and disaster management units. I will end with this as a Red Cross and Red Crescent movement. Humanitarian can leverage the innovation process to anticipate and prepare for future challenges, to support communities, 
as they develop and become self-sustaining and to improve efficiency and impact. Thank you.